doing well? Here is your own biology teacher Mahmood Hassan. Today I will cover an important topic and explain how energy is transferred in biotic component of ecosystem. We will learn the concepts of food chain, food web, trophic levels and energy flow through the ecosystem. An ecological system or ecosystem is made up of all the organisms that live in an area and the physical environment of that area. The physical environment includes water, inorganic substances and sunlight, that is the non-living things. Organisms, their products and the effect that they have on their environment are the living component of an ecosystem. Together, the interacting living and non-living components form a self-regulating system through which energy and matter are transferred. Describing and understanding how these transfers occur is a major theme of biology. This simple flow chart summarizes three ways to represent feeding relationship in ecosystems. Organisms in an ecosystem can be identified by how they obtain their food and the kind of food they eat. For example, organisms can be classified as producers, herbivores, carnivores and decomposers. Organisms are also identified by the way they obtain their food. For example, organisms could be classified as producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers and quaternary consumers. Another related way to think about feeding relationship among organisms uses the concept of trophic level. The word trophic is Greek in origin and means food. So trophic level in an ecosystem is a feeding level through which energy and matter are transferred. The first trophic level in any ecosystem provides all the chemical energy required to fuel the other trophic levels. Thus the first trophic level consists of producers. All remaining trophic levels in any given ecosystem consist of consumers. The term food chain was first used by Charles Elton in 1920. Elton was interested in documenting feeding relationship between living organisms. He described food chain as a model that shows linear pathways through which food is transferred from producers to primary consumers and to higher trophic levels. Elton then discovered that simple food chains could not adequately describe the tangled web of feeding relationships that he observed. Thus he developed the concept of a food web. A food web is a model of food energy transfer in an ecosystem that shows the connections among the food chains. Our discussion on energy transfers would be incomplete if we don't talk about energy available to producers. About 30% of the energy is reflected from clouds, particles in the atmosphere or from land or the surface of the ocean back into space. Albedo is a term used to describe the amount of reflected energy. Earth's albedo varies from place to place, but the average is about 30%. Light colored reflected surfaces and thick clouds have albedos of 80% to 90%. Dark surfaces such as forest canopies and the water have the lower albedos of 25% or less. About 90% of energy is absorbed by gases such as water vapor and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Some of this energy will heat the atmosphere 
and some will radiate back into the space. About 51% of the energy reaches the Earth's surface. Energy absorbed by the land and the ocean warms our planet's surface. Some of the heat from the warm surface radiates upward into the atmosphere and out into space. Of the energy that reaches the ground, only a small fraction reaches producers. Of that amount that reaches the producer is used for photosynthesis. The result is that only 1 to 2 percent of the total radiant energy that reaches Earth is converted into chemical energy through photosynthesis. This energy flow diagram explains the principle of food chains and working of the two laws of thermodynamics. Of the 111 gram calories per centimeter square per year of the light energy fixed by the plants, only 13.5% is available to herbivores. The remainder 86.5% is not utilized at all and is lost through decomposition and respiration. Similarly, of the 13.5% available to herbivores, only 20% of energy is funneled up to the carnivores and the remaining 80% is lost to the environment. Looking at these figures, two big points become clear. Firstly, energy flows unidirectionally, which means that the energy that is captured by the autotrophs does not revert back to the solar input. That energy which passes to herbivores does not pass back to autotrophs. As it moves progressively through the various trophic levels, it is no longer available to the previous levels. Due to this one-way flow of energy, the system would collapse if the sun, the primary and ultimate source of energy were cut off. Secondly, there is a progressive decrease in energy level at each trophic level. This is accounted largely by the energy dissipated as heat in metabolic activities and measured here as respiration coupled with unutilized and not available energy. In this figure, boxes represent the trophic levels and the pipes depict the energy flow in and out of each level. Energy inflows balance outflows as required by the first law of thermodynamics and energy transferred is accompanied by dispersion of energy into unavailable heat as required by the second law. It becomes evident that energy flow is greatly reduced at each successive trophic level from producers to herbivores and then to carnivores. Thus, at each transfer of energy from one level to another, major part of energy is lost as heat or other form. There is a successive reduction in energy flow whether we consider it in terms of total flow or secondary production and respiration components. Thus, of the 3000 kilocalories of the total light falling upon the green plants, approximately 50% means 1500 kilocalories is absorbed, of which only 1%, that is 15 kilocalories, is converted at first trophic level. Thus, net primary production is merely 15 kilocalories. Secondary productivity P2 and P3 in the diagram tend to be about 10% at successive consumer trophic levels, that is herbivores and carnivores, although efficiency may be sometimes higher as 20%. At the carnivore level, as shown, P3 is 
3 kilo, 0.3 kilocalories in the diagram. It becomes evident that these two slides that there is a reduction in the energy flow at each successive level. In other words, we can generalize that shorter the food chain, the greater would be the available energy as with an increase in the length of the food chain, there is a corresponding more loss of energy. This ends up our discussion on energy transfers. Leave your comments in the comment section and let me know if you need my help. So please don't forget to hit like and press the flower icon to subscribe to my channel Biology for All. Bye till next video.